Hey everyone, it's me again. Uh, as you can tell by today's topic, it's going to be about religion and alignment in Dungeons and Dragons and Pathfinder and all the other wonderful D20 games that have it. Um, so, I first wanted to point out that, yes, gods are very diverse and a pantheon. You know, you've got good, you've got neutral, you've got chaos, uh, good, neutral, and evil. you got lawful and neutral and chaotic, yada, yada, yada. But here's the thing. Some of those gods would work together even if they were of opposing alignments. Uh, for example, Asmodeus, the god of hell. Well, he's lawful evil. It's one of his domains, law and order. He is lawful. You obey the law. Well, another lawful good god would work with him because Asmodeus, even though he's evil, is upholding the law. And that's something they could technically respect. Sure, they might disagree on certain methods, but it's enough to get a groundwork between the two of them. So, when you're making your characters, if the other players have characters that are following gods, take it in consideration. I don't mean, you know, oh, he's playing a lawful good god, so now you have to play... play uh, someone who follows a good god and not an evil god uh, and this also extends to alignment um, here's a good example you have a rogue a lawful evil, lawful evil wizard and a lawful good paladin now they're trying to essentially follow after a murderer that they believe they saw go into this house um, do they break in and you know, see if they actually found the murderer and try and stop him? Or do they wait and possibly, you know, lose another life? Um, so, the paladin obviously would be, well, we should get the guards and, you know, then go in. So that way we have the guards with us and, you know, we can be on the right side of the law. Meanwhile, the lawful evil <laughs> wizard is more like, look, if we break in now and we end up saving a life, then the law will forgive us for breaking in because we saved a life and we were able to stop a murderer. So for the greater good, we should break in now and ask for forgiveness later. The rogue doesn't care because... Uh, uh, but that's a dynamic between you know the lawful evil and the lawful good that you could use in your party, uh, be you player or DM. It's that, yes, they are good and evil, but they're lawful. And that's something that they could essentially find a basis that the two could work together. They won't agree with everything. Uh, the paladin might disagree with like minor things just to be an ass because, you know, you're evil and I'm not doing that because you suggested it. Or the wizard might do the same because it's like, well, you're good and that doesn't sound like something I would do because, well, I'm evil. But still that is something that they could work together and make a party dynamic that essentially helps define the adventure for the party and for the dm uh, another two uh alignments honestly these alignments are kind of cop-outs but they are you know they are what they are chaotic neutral is you know subject to whatever whims that might strike them you know they might decide to go left down a path while everyone else is going right but you know that's that's what chaotic neutral does uh screw order screw good and evil and i'm gonna do whatever i want and oh i'm sorry i just randomly remembered something uh but, you know, chaotic neutrals, they could work with a party because it suits their whims. And it's like, oh, you know, you want the door down? Well, while you, talk, you two are bickering and arguing, you know, how you should go about it, I'm just going to break down the door. Or I'm going to, you know, pick the lock and, you know, push the door open and just go on ahead and because my whims say I should do it, so I'm going to do it. Uh, true neutral uh, is also a cop-out because... They don't care about good and evil. They don't care about law and chaos. They're themselves. They are selfish. Uh, I'm not talking about the balanced true neutral, which is the balance between, you know, 
everything balance must be obtained and you know maintained now i'm talking about the other true neutral which is i do whatever i want in order to survive i care not for law i care not for chaos i care not for good not for evil i do what i must in order to survive and that's pretty much it they they do whatever they can to survive be it good or be it evil that's what they will do if it helps them survive, they will do it. And this, you know, goes into a role-playing thing as well, because, you know, if you role-play as your alignments, and really, the alignments aren't, you know, you must be this way. It's more of guidelines as to how your character would react to different situations. Uh, and if you role-play out as your alignments, your DM might give you a small bonus, uh, be it in XP or perhaps... A boon for one game session uh, you know let them be creative uh, but also another thing when it comes to alignment and religion in Pathfinder and Dungeons and Dragons is that well in Pathfinder say you are a fighter following the god uh, Caden Kellyan who is a Pretty awesome god, to be honest. You know, he's all about freedom of self and freedom uh, in general. And, you know, opposes slavery and oppression. So, if you're a fighter of Caden Killian and uh, you see a bunch of slavers. And, you know, they've got a nice amount of cargo and they're trying to ship around. Well, as a fighter, you can definitely go over and start picking a fight. But also, as a follow of Caden Killian that offends you the fact that you know there's slavers over there regardless of whether they are you know well within their rights and well within the law to be slavers it is against your morals because you are a follow of Cain Keller sure you don't get any benefits say like as a paladin or a cleric but it's still something that your character believes in and I believe you certainly should use to your benefit. Um, and when it comes down to it, the DM might reward you for that. It's like, you know, you were able to free the slaves and you feel yourself kind of lighter, uh, kind of like you felt a great weight lifted off your shoulders and you feel a warm presence coming from your mug. Uh, you pick up your mug and you see it's instantly filled with a, a brew of uh, ethereal, you know, quality. It's the best brew that you've ever had in your life. Cain Killian rewarded you for, you know, killing those slavers and setting those slaves free. But, you know, that's, once again, a role-playing thing. And, you know, most DMs like that. They like role-playing your character. They like the fact that you... Uh, held up to, you know, your alignment and so on, and they'll reward you for doing so. Uh, but yeah, that's about as much as I got for this episode. Thank you very much for uh, tuning in and watching it. And uh, I think I'll make another episode today. I'm not sure. I'll get to that when I get to that. Anyways, you guys have a nice day.